Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Amazon Key Spaces. So what is Amazon Key Spaces? Key Spaces is a scalable, highly available, serverless, managed, Apache Cassandra, compatible database service. So this is the simplest definition that you can give anyone if someone says what is key spaces. Now I believe you already know what is scalable and highly available, right? Most of the services on cloud are scalable and highly available. This is a serverless service. That means no servers, nothing to patch, nothing to take care of, no addition of disk, no maintenance of servers, right? So you don't have to worry about anything. If there is no storage space or anything or a disk running out on the server or anything of that sort. And it's a managed service. That means it does uh, everything on its own. You don't have to do anything. You just have to get your data and basically just work with it. This particular service key spaces is compatible with Apache Cassandra database. So Apache Cassandra is a is a NoSQL open source distributed database and it's known to handle large amounts of data as well. Right? So you can consider key spaces as a version of Apache Cassandra running on AWS. So what does this service do? I think it's quite obvious because it's compatible with, with Apache Cassandra. You can essentially migrate, run and scale Cassandra workloads in AWS using key spaces. And while you are doing that, you can still continue to use the same Cassandra application code and developer tools that you are using earlier, including the Cassandra query language CQL that is used to connect to the Cassandra database. Now key spaces offers two throughput capacity modes for reads and writes, right? One is on demand and second is provisioned. For on demand modes, essentially you do not know what your capacity is going to be. So you just say, okay, I'm just going to keep it on demand. I don't know anything right now. And I will basically pay for whatever reads and writes my application does. And of course you do not know your table's throughput capacity and hence it does not need to be mentioned in advance. But let's say if you did know, then you would go for the provision capacity mode, wherein you will specify the number of reads, the number of writes, and also uh, provide uh, the throughput capacity for your table. Now, since you know what you want, right, by using the provision capacity mode, you can actually get an optimal price for this particular service. And while when we go to pricing, you will also see the difference between on-demand mode and provision capacity mode as well. For many of us, right in the beginning, we do not know what our capacity of, for our application is going to be. So in that case, you can always start with an on-demand mode. And once, let's say, your application is running for a couple of months and you have a good amount of data, some knowledge, you know, regarding what is your uh, peak capacity, what is your off-peak capacity, later on you can always convert or change to provisioned capacity mode. Or it can be even vice versa. Let's say you estimated something and just went totally, you know, totally haywire. I mean, your estimates were totally off, off the charts or suddenly, let's say, you had a burst of requests coming in. You can always go and change it to on-demand mode as well. And that is one of the features of this particular service. You can change the capacity mode of your table once per day. Okay, so only, only once per day. Now, data is encrypted by default at rest. And all client connections require TLS. Your data is also replicated three times across different AZs. The other good thing about uh, Cassandra or this particular service key spaces is that it provides data at a high speed connection. 
So let's say if you had applications like trading applications, right, that require a, a single digit millisecond latency, you can certainly use key spaces for that, right? Because it, it can it can provide you data at that kind of a speed. Now, this is a very simple diagram that explains how key spaces works, right? Let's say you have a Cassandra application and it, it basically uses CQL to get data right now. You can still continue to use CQL and have it connect to Amazon key spaces to retrieve its data. Benefits, I think benefits are pretty obvious. It is compatible with Apache Cassandra. So you have Cassandra workloads, you can easily migrate to key spaces. You can still continue to use your CDL language. It is of course serverless and along with serverless you saw it is scalable, highly available, managed, right? So you don't have to do anything. You're not doing any patching. You're not worried about uh, the disk. And in fact, it even allows you to change the throughput. So you, even if you don't know like, hey, how many requests am I going to get? You can always start with on demand or you can start with an approximate estimate. And if it does not work, hey, you can always go and change your mode as well. And that is the third benefit right here. Use cases. Of course, migrating Cassandra workloads to AWS. You can also develop apps using open source because Cassandra itself is an open source technology. And last but not the least is developing applications that require low latency responses like trading applications, fleet management, or route optimization. Pricing. Let us look at pricing. So you only pay for what you use. There are no minimum fees, right? And between the two modes, as you see over here, you have on-demand capacity mode. And then at the bottom, you have provision capacity mode. Now you can select whatever your region is. So I'm going to go, let's say, for North, East Ohio. Right. And so in the in the on demand capacity mode, your read request is one point four forty five dollars per million request units. And your read request is zero point two nine per million read request units. Now, this is for on demand. Now, look at the provision capacity mode. This is one point four five for write. Over here, it is zero point zero 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 seven five. So if you know what your capacity is, using this service can be a real blessing. And as we discussed earlier, if you do not know what your capacity is, you can always have it on demand for the first few months. And then eventually, once you have a good idea, you have a, a decent ballpark, you can always change it to provision capacity mode. Now, along with that, of course, you have some storage. So this is your uh, storage charges. You have some backup and Restore, you have PITR, point in time recovery charges as well. You also have some charges for restoring your table, right? So backup restore. And you have some charges for database, uh, sorry, data transfer as well. So right here. I believe there are some time to live charges uh, as mentioned here. And that's pretty much it. But if you go back to your uh, basic charges, right, between your provision capacity mode and your on-demand capacity mode. These are the key charges right here. And let's say if I change the region and go to, let's say, Mumbai. So again, the charges vary per region. So this is your uh, write charges, right, for provision and read charges for provision. And if you scroll up, um, these are your write charges uh, for on-demand and read charges for on so I hope that this gives you a decent idea about this service. Now do explore this service and let me know what is your experience. I will also try and create a lab around this, right? And have it posted shortly. But that's it from me today. And I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.